Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. You may be seated for our reading. Our reading for today comes from Psalm 8. O eternal, our Lord, your majestic name is heard throughout the earth. Your magnificent glory shines far above the skies. From the mouths and the souls of infants and toddlers, the most innocent, you have decreed power to stop your adversities and, and quash those who seek revenge. When I gaze to the skies and meditate on your creation, on the moon, stars, and all you have made, I can't help but wonder why you care about mortals, sons and daughters of men, specks of dust floating about the cosmos. But you placed the Son of Man just beneath God and honored him like royalty, crowning him with glory and honor. You ordained him to govern the works of your hands, to nurture the offspring of your divine imagination. You placed everything on earth beneath his feet. All kinds of domesticated animals, even the wild animals in the fields, in the forests, the birds of the sky, and the fish in the sea, all the multitudes of living things that travel the currents of the oceans. O eternal, our Lord, your majestic name is heard throughout the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, we are so blessed that we are able to kick off a brand new children's church today. So normally at this time, right before the gospel, we'll dismiss our children and their teachers. But today, I really want to bless them all first. So I would invite all of the children forward and come on up. I've got something fun for all the kids. These are backpack tags. These go on your backpacks, and you can take them. Do we have any teachers with us today that also go to school every day? Any teachers? Anybody else want a tag for their work bag, their laptop bag, their suitcase if you travel? Who else wants a backpack tag? We've got a lot. Anybody else want backpack tags? Come on up. You want one? If you want, these are for grown-ups and kids. Come on up, friends. Anybody else want a backpack tag? Jason does. All right. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay. All right. So now, friends, we want to bless all of our children today as they're getting ready because they're going back to school. If you decide later that you want a backpack tag, friends, they're right here. Okay. We want to pray for our students and for their parents. So I invite you to join me in this litany. As we pray, I will pray, O Lord of life and love, and you are invited to respond, hear our prayer. It's not in your bulletin. It's just happening. All right. Ready? O holy God, the time has come when school begins. As these, your children, begin their studies, we ask a blessing on them, on their backpacks, on their markers and pens and pencils. O Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. Bless, O oh God, all those who will teach our children in the coming days and weeks and months. Give them wisdom to find inspiration for each child. Give them energy and creativity and love that will make their work a blessing to our children. O oh Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. Bless, O oh God, all school administrators, that they may be faithful stewards of the resources entrusted to their care. Make them fair and merciful, able to do their crucial work with a spirit of grace and compassion. O Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. Bless, O God, each one gathered here, that we will seek every opportunity to grow in our knowledge and love of you, in all our classes for youth and students and adults. Grant that we may see you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly. O Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. And finally, O Lord, bless these cherished children, those whom we have promised to love and nurture at their baptism. Keep them safe, keep them excited, keep them ever seeking to learn more and to develop their gifts. Grant that through their study, they may gain the tools to grow in love and faith and service all their days. O Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. Bless, O oh God, our children and the backpacks they carry. 
O Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. Amen. All right, friends, I invite you to go back to your seats. If you were one of the adults that volunteered to lead Children's Church this year, please stand where you are. We have several folks, and not all of them are here because some of them are leading another week. So we have several folks that have volunteered to help. Everyone near them, can you go towards them and put your hands on them if they're okay with it? We want to pray for a brand new Children's Church leaders. We're so excited for them. If there's a parent near you, put your hands on them. They teach these kids every single day. We want to bless our parents and our teachers today. Thank you, friends. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for every teacher as they begin this new school year. Thank you for their ministry to your children. Sustain them in health. Protect and keep them. Bless their ears to hear the lovely, the uplifting, the encouraging, and to shut out the demeaning and the negative. Bless their hands to be tender, helping hands to those in need. May their minds be strong, balanced, and faith-filled. May your grace be upon their homes and classrooms, that they may be havens of rest and renewal, sanctuaries of peace where the sounds of joy and laughter grace each room where love and unconditional acceptance is never-ending. Lord, bless them and keep them. Make your face shine upon them and be gracious to them. Lord, lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, friends. You may be seated. At this time, I invite today's children's church leaders that's Ellen and Carrie, are going to take children to Children's Church. This is our first week, so moms and dads, you may want to go with them right away so they have some idea what's happening or not. They're going to show a video, do a paper, and they'll come back in about 20 minutes. It's going to be super fun. So folks, preschool through fifth grade are invited every week from now until Christmas. We're going to have Children's Church. It's really exciting. And their children's bulletins that they can do here in the sanctuary match the lesson that they're doing. And so then they can connect it with a story Bible during the week. Thanks, friends. Let's have a big round of applause for our Children's Church volunteers. <clears throat> We are so excited that this is something we are able to do. Today's gospel lesson is not printed. And so, that's okay. I invite you to stand as you're able for today's gospel reading from the Gospel of Mark. I'm so sorry, friends. Here we go. Our reading today, our gospel today, is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, beginning at verse 13. People were bringing little children to Jesus in order that he might touch them. But the disciples spoke sternly to them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant, and he said to the disciples, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And then Jesus took the children up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I was 10 years old when I realized that my parents are only human. Like most young children, I really had no idea how much time and energy my parents put into caring for us and loving for us. Like many of you, my parents did their best to surround us with unconditional love. But then fourth grade year, I got that teacher. You know the one. The teacher who either doesn't like children or is just incapable of showing emotions at all. And it was pretty shocking for me to admit, but I was pretty sure she wasn't teaching us very well. So I went to my parents and I asked them, make it stop. Just get the teacher to stop the emotional and verbal abuse. 
or ask her to leave, or at the very least, just get me out of that class. And I had complete childlike faith that my beloved parents would just fix the whole thing. Now, unfortunately, that was the year I discovered my parents are not all powerful. Despite their efforts, it was just going to be a long year with a mean teacher. (laughs) And a mean teacher doesn't sound like a big deal to me right now, but any of you who have children in school, you know what a big deal it is to a 10-year-old. Now, my parents were only human, but they were humans who loved me. And they reassured me that God loved me too. They planted seeds of childlike faith in my heart and my soul. I learned that that teacher is not God. God loves all of us. And I learned that God was willing to listen to all of our problems. And I didn't have to be worried about whether my problems were too small or whether I was unworthy. I could just talk to God the way I would bring problems to adults in my life. So in today's gospel reading, Jesus reminds his disciples, his skeptics, and all of us that we're supposed to come before God like helpless, trusting children. The truth is, Jesus says, you must accept God's kingdom like a little child accepts things. For this is what the kingdom of God is all about. Small children are completely dependent on adults to provide everything they need. Jesus explains we have to depend on God the way little children depend on adults. Kids just expect that adults will take care of them. Food shows up. Love happens. (laughs) The house is there. We're created by God to be that dependent on God's love too. So no matter how grown up we are, God asks us to continue to cultivate our own childlike faith so that we can trust in God to care for us just as parents care for vulnerable children, no matter how independent we think we are. Now, today's gospel reading from Mark 10, just before that, the disciples are arguing about who is the greatest amongst the 12 of them. While Jesus patiently explains The first will be last, and the last will be first, and the heart of the kingdom is about welcoming the vulnerable. But they don't get it. Nobody gets it. Because right after that, important lawyers and reporters are jumping in front of Jesus, trying to debate controversial issues. Sick people are demanding Jesus' hands bring healing. Desperate parents are pushing their babies in front of Jesus, hoping for a moment of blessing. Everyone, it seems, is demanding to be important enough for a few minutes of Jesus' time. In the midst of all of this, Jesus gets right to the heart of the matter. He picks up babies from their parents' arms and blesses them. With babies in his hand, he tells the crowd that the very point of his ministry is to welcome everyone. All people matter to them. No matter their age or status or ability. No matter if they're single or married or divorced or separated or something complicated. No matter if they're gay or straight or trans, Jesus is never too busy or too important for anyone. It doesn't matter if someone is an immigrant or a citizen or a refugee. It doesn't matter if their skin is black or brown or beige. Jesus is not like that teacher who tried to convince me adults are just too important and too busy to care about little kids' feelings. In fact, it's just the opposite. Jesus is seeking out the lost, the weak, the marginalized. Jesus looks for the overlooked, and he loves the brokenhearted, and he welcomes the outcast. The kingdom of God is full of people who are weak and vulnerable and troubled. It's just as shocking today as it was 2,000 years ago. Then, like now, many people thought they had to earn access to the kingdom of God. And babies hadn't done anything worthwhile to earn such a privilege. When Jesus holds babies in his arms, he is powerfully illustrating that entrance to God's kingdom is a gift which cannot be earned. 
any more than babies earn unconditional love. The kingdom of God is full of people who have received God's love and God's grace as free gifts. Just like a baby accepts food and love without ever having done a single thing to earn it. So Jesus challenges his disciples, share God's love freely, like an adoring parent. Just keep handing it out to everybody. But he's also challenging the disciples to receive God's love freely, like a helpless baby. Now, it's pretty tough to do either one, but it's impossible for humans to do both of those perfectly. Still, we gather together as a church every week to practice receiving the gift of God's love through the service of others and sharing God's love to those in need. We'll never be able to earn our way into God's kingdom, but the good news in today's gospel lesson is that in spite of our own limits and failures, God is always loving, and God is always faithful. Now, there might have been a person in your life who told you to get away from Jesus, just like the disciples in our gospel story today. But that person isn't Jesus. Jesus is always welcoming you back with open arms. No matter whose words made it difficult to believe in God's love for you, please hear these words. God loves you. No matter who pushed you away, Jesus' arms are open to receive us just as we are. The uncool, the unprepared, the unwelcome. And once we are so completely enveloped in God's love, we start to extend it to everybody else in unexpected and unlikely ways. There might have been a person in whom you shared Jesus' love and in whom you planted seeds of faith, maybe even your own child or someone very close to you. But despite your best efforts, that person has turned away from the gift of faith offered to them. It's very sad, but it's not your fault. God's a perfect parent, and we have all turned away from God. The good news is that just like a loving parent, God will keep calling them back. Jesus' death and resurrection means that his arms are always open, no matter what, no matter who, no matter when, no matter where. In the meantime, we keep praying for those we love. We continue to sow seeds of faith in our own lives, in the lives of others, however God has called us. Today, we honor back to school season in our families and in our communities, and we have an opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to the children of the congregation. And we adults have a chance to recommit to cultivating our own childlike faith. We can commit to making sure this is the kind of church that welcomes children and their families no matter what. God alone can cause faith to grow. But like a greenhouse, we can ensure that all of the elements are in place here to help those seeds of faith take root and grow strong. Whether you're six years old or 60, God promises that faith can grow. But we should be doing our part to feed that faith regularly. Weekly worship and Bible study, daily prayer and Bible reading, regular giving of our time and money, those aren't just extra things we fit in when we have time. Those are the sun and the rain and the fertilizer which are necessary for those seeds of faith to keep growing into the vines which will share godly fruit with others. I am a product of dozens of faithful adults planting and feeding the seeds of faith in my heart. Now, I was 10 years old when I realized my parents are not all-powerful, and some adults are frankly just mean to kids. But that year, while it was really challenging and sad, was just temporary. All the other adults in my life, my parents, my pastor, my Sunday school teachers, told me that God loves me. God loves all children. So the next year... When my parents switched our schools and I joined a classroom in a Lutheran school with a faithful Christian teacher, the seeds which my faith community had been planting for over a decade really began to sprout. 
and they continued to grow over the next 15 years. As my teachers and youth ministers and pastors invested so heavily in me until I became one of those teachers and then youth ministers and then pastors who feeds the seeds of faith in other children. You might not be a child. You might not have a child in your home. You may not be called to be a teacher or a youth minister or a pastor. But you can still be a part of faith growth opportunities we have at this church. You can get active in cultivating your own childlike faith. We have Bible study on Sunday. We have Bible study twice on Wednesdays. You can use the Taking Faith Home inserts or the Christ in Our Home devotional booklets available in the narthex to do prayer and Bible study at home. You can serve in worship on Sundays or at the church during the week. And if you're not exactly sure what the next steps of your faith life might be, let's meet, let's pray together, let's figure out where God is calling you. You can get active in welcoming children to the faith journey. We can use adults to lead children's church during worship. We can use folks to help fundraise and kick off our new community-wide ecumenical youth ministry, which will start on September 23rd. We can use volunteers to sit in the playground most weeks so that parents can actually worship while their kids are enjoying time in church. We can use volunteers at monthly Prime Horizon worship where the adults with disabilities that hang out here every day come right into this space and have church with me. We all want to hear your ideas. How can we make this space more welcoming to children and families, to folks in our community who aren't yet connected to a church home? Now, I am sure that spending time with children or acting like a child does not sound very glamorous. And maybe you're right. But if God can come to earth as a helpless baby, if Jesus can pick up children with dirty diapers in his arms and bless them, if the Holy Spirit can show up in the hearts of the youngest amongst us, can't we also answer the call to grow our own faith, to share our faith with others, especially with children? One of my favorite hymns is called Hark the Voice of Jesus Calling. Didn't make it into our new hymnal, but I still love it. It has a verse in the middle which goes like this. If you cannot speak like angels, if you cannot preach like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus. You can say he died for all. If you cannot rouse the wicked with the judgments, dread alarms, you can lead the little children to the Savior's waiting arms. How is God calling you to cultivate childlike faith? Maybe you're being called to spend a season encouraging your own personal faith growth. But maybe, maybe, just maybe, you're ready to start sharing the fruits of your faith with others. No matter how God has called us, we remember that as a beloved child of God, we are called to love others and welcome them like little children. That hymn I love so much has a final verse that goes like this. Let none hear you idly saying, there is nothing I can do. While the multitudes are dying and the master calls for you. Take the task he gives you gladly. Let his work your pleasure be. Answer quickly when Christ calls you, here am I. Send me, send me. I pray that all of us will receive the opportunities God has given to cultivate childlike faith in our own hearts, and that by the grace of God, we will continue to welcome and care for all of God's children and our congregation and our community. No matter how God calls us, may each one of us answer, Here am I. Send me. Send 